Now, in teaching, one of the key elements of assessment is your ability to defend your assessment. Um, and mechanisms to support that will be developed in your school around what are called school assessment policies. So there'll be various expectations that you will need to adhere to. And as long as you are adhering to them and can justify your assessment in terms of them, then you can use that to defend any questions about your assessment. So probably the first of these is around in academic integrity. So essentially that you can show that your students um, have been fairly assessed and that it is um, their own abilities that they are demonstrating. Now, sometimes that can be difficult Say if you've given them a task to do and they've gone home and done it and their parents, in all helpfulness, have given them um, excessive support in completing the task. Now, if that was a task for assessment, that would have some problems with academic integrity. It wasn't the student's own ability that was being demonstrated. It may have been the parent's ability that was being demonstrated. Now, not to say that that's not necessarily a good learning process. And having parents involved in students' learning activities can often engage students with the learning task and um, improve the learning process. So you shouldn't see parental involvement as a negative at all. It's only when it's being done to measure student ability where it would become problematic. Likewise, students working with their peers, helping each other, do tasks and work collaboratively is a good, strong, positive learning process. It's when they do it, though, when you are trying to assess their ability individually, that if they work with their friend and their friend shows them the answers and so forth, that becomes problematic in terms of academic integrity. So there is a balance that needs to be approached. There are times when you need to assess things and students need to be demonstrating only their own ability. But there are times when you can accommodate other forms of assessment, such as group assessment, where you assess the ability of a group and you report on the ability of the group, not on the individual. Now that can be problematic because most of our reporting processes are based around individual performance. But if it's not for those processes, then it's a perfectly acceptable way. Now, of course, there's mechanisms then that can be used to try to identify students' contributions to group work and so forth, but that's an aside. But essentially, academic integrity is around the authenticity of the students' work and as a, me as a true measure of their ability. So the other aspect around that, though, is quality assurance. Now, not all assessment tasks are good assessment tasks. As we discussed, there are different aspects of assessment tasks that we need to try to ensure that they uh, meet. So if the assessment task is biased towards some students and not others, that's problematic. If it has a lot of uh, opportunities for um, interpretation and misinterpretation, so that students may interpret things very differently to how the assessor, the teacher, in terms of marking it, interprets what needs to be done. That's problematic. So quality assurance is an important aspect of um, your assessment elements that you need to develop. Now, some ways of improving that is through engaging in professional learning. So here at the university, of course, in preparation to becoming a teacher, you're engaging with professional learning. But that needs to continue well beyond your initial teacher education. Collaborating and designing assessment tasks with your peers, with other teachers, particularly more experienced teachers, is an effective way of improving your assessment. Um, sharing your learning intentions and objectives and, and criteria so that others can look at those and see how it relates to and, get, and you receiving feedback on those criteria. And finally, engaging in feedback and in moderation. And there are some formal ways of doing this that we'll discuss in a moment. But essentially, if you can show 
that your assessment tasks have integrity in terms of measuring students' work authentically and that you've put a reasonable effort into having quality assessment tasks that have been peer reviewed by your other teachers that have been developed over time and used with many students and you've looked at readings about assessment tasks and um, tried to ensure that they met all the different expectations of assessment tasks, then generally you can meet the um, school assessment policies in relation to assessment. Okay, there are those some significant aspects that you do need to be mindful around ethical and legal implications of assessment. And these are sort of the horror stories uh, for teachers in terms of assessment. So one aspect is confidentiality and privacy. Students, you don't have the right to share um, students' ability with others. Sometimes you don't even have the right to share it with parents, although in Australia generally um, we don't go to that extreme. But students do have certain rights. Now, we abuse those rights all the time in schools, but we need to be very careful that we are abusing them for educational purposes. And if you're challenged on where you've exceeded the general expectations on students' rights, and you can't show a clear educational benefit from that, then you can get into trouble. Um, and sometimes just assessment is not necessarily a clear educational benefit. Now, at the moment, we're getting away with that, but generally, it has to be a clear benefit to the student. And it's difficult sometimes to show that getting an F is actually beneficial to the student. From their perspective, it's not particularly beneficial. Um, now, generally, we can demonstrate a bigger picture and explain a way that um, engagement with those processes. But if they're taken to court, and sometimes these issues are taken to court, thankfully not very often in Australia, but it happens a lot in some other countries, particularly in the United States, then you have to be very careful around um, what you have and haven't done within a school environment in terms of assessment. But okay. So essentially, though, you should never um, share details of students' assessment beyond anyone that has to know it for clear educational purposes. So it may be the principal in terms of recording information and so forth. Even sharing it with other teachers, unless you've got a really clear reason for sharing it that's going to be a demonstrable benefit to the student as a result of that sharing, you need to be cautious about sharing it. Now, it should go on saying that you shouldn't share it to those outside of education. So not with your significant other, with your friends. These are, these are where you could get into big trouble. Now, in primary schools, generally it's not, never really happens. But there is that potential. Of course, students do have the right and ex to expect that their privacy is being protected, including from their teacher. Okay, so beyond that, fairness and equity. If it can be shown that you are biasing certain students um, and you're not being fair, then that can be problematic. And it is unfortunately something that students will interpret quite a bit. They will see you as having favorites. They will see that there is potentiality for um, certain students to be favored over others. Um, and you need to try to ensure that that doesn't happen and that it's not perceived as happening. Back to that validity, validity and reliability of your assessment. Um, we've discussed that. Ethical considerations are things that you should also consider. Is it right to have a pop quiz where students haven't had a chance to prepare for the assessment? Is it right to ask some questions that might be confronting to them? say questions that might challenge them in terms of their beliefs, uh, religious or otherwise. Um, if you're asking them, say even a simple question like, how many hot dogs um, 
if adding up the number of hot dogs and how much how many hot dogs would be as a result of that if they are vegan so really simple things like that may be problematic because it's imposing your ethical beliefs upon your students now of course we need to be reasonable around those processes but there are cases where inadvertently those issues have come up uh, particularly in some religious schools but it can come up in other areas as well so you do need to take some consideration particularly when it comes to assessment now we can generally get away with it in other things because we're just promoting discussions and exploring different possibilities but if it's in assessment and if it does impact upon students ability to, to demonstrate their learning then that can be more problematic. Okay, there can be some legal compliance aspects. Generally, that's not a huge problem in, in Australia, but there are certain legal requirements around assessment. Um, probably one of the biggest ones you do need to be careful on is you have you can only report to parents on the A to E scale. So giving them other forms of feedback and reporting is actually illegal in Australia. Um, uh, wasn't very long ago when we did actually go about giving parents very comprehensive, detailed uh, portfolios of students learning that broke down all the learning outcomes and gave them scores on all these different aspects. Uh, parents reacted to that and through the political process, um, laws were enacted to prevent schools from reporting on students' progress other than on an A to E scale. So regardless of your good intentions in providing more detailed feedback to your parents, uh, you can't legally do so. So there are some just sort of, again, no one's really going to prosecute an individual teacher for doing those sort of things, but they are things you need to be aware of. And finally, around accountability, that you are accountable to the assessment practices uh, ultimately, your principal is accountable. Uh, so that's a good thing for teachers. But of course, they will then come down upon you if you have um, brought them into problems because of issues that you have generated. But in schools, the principal is ultimately accountable for what occurs in the school. But that's not to say that you won't also be held accountable by your principal for your own practices in your classroom. Okay, so the other aspect around that and a way of improving your assessment processes and trying to alleviate these issues is by a process of moderation. So again, it's getting together with your peers, other teachers, and sharing um, students' work, again, ethically in this case, of course, it's for a clear educational benefit, and having them make judgments and comparing it with your own judgments. So if you can show that um, other teachers have looked at a student's work and they've said, yes, that's also a C standard, and you've also agreed it's a C standard, and you've been able to demonstrate that you do that regularly, then that's a very strong way of being able to um, defend your judgments on students' performance by having that moderation process in place. And it doesn't have to happen with every assessment task by any means. And there are some more formalized ways of doing moderation, which we apply mostly in high schools and particularly senior high schools, where we can use other moderation techniques. Um, but in the main, uh, collaborative moderation with peers is an acceptable process in primary schools. So have a look at those moderation documents and just think about how you would moderate with your peers on your assessment so that your judgments on your students can be improved and you can defend your judgments by demonstrating that other teachers would also have come to the same judgment on your students' performance.